Hello fellow tankers, this is Dauntless, and today I'm going to be playing a game in my tier 10 German medium tank, the Leopard 1. Now, the Leopard 1, as I've probably told you <laughs> in many replays, is probably one of my favorite tier 10 tanks, and this is because it's a lot like a medium tank, it's just, you know, low camo value, obviously, and kind of a big tank, but realistically, it, the trade-off, which is the amazing gun, is well worth it. And <laughs> here I'm talking about the amazing gun, but it does troll me quite a bit in this game, as you will see. Now the map that we're playing on today is Westfield, and if you look at the enemy lineup, it's pretty even. Wargaming has done a decent job balancing the matchmaker. Um, and the major thing that I've noticed when I'm looking at both teams is the fact that they have one extra heavy tank, and that one extra heavy tank is an E100. Now, typically this is not a huge deal, but in a map like this, where you know, having one extra heavy tank like that can make a big difference, especially when there's no artillery to keep them kind of in check and keep them from pushing too aggressively. I have a gut feeling that the north is going to get completely steamrolled. And you can kind of look at that now, how they're kind of spread out wide down here. Their heavy tanks are just being really aggressive, and our guys are kind of clumped up in this corner. And this is a bad sign, typically, when you see it. Now our 57 heavy and our E5 are kind of engaging, but those guys have all been lit up north and they are all pushing very aggressively now unfortunately the leopard there's not a lot i could do i could push up there and kind of play where the e5 is playing on that ridge but with the little bit of armor i have trying to face um, like e100s and e5 straight on it's just kind of asking for trouble because realistically you're going to be trading one for one if that if you're able to penetrate you're gonna have to shoot gold to penetrate the turret of those vehicles and it's just really not worth the trade-off and so we do have some shots going down over on this side and I want to try to help these guys win the south as quickly as possible because the second the north falls we're gonna to have to move to the south and take it because we will be completely scissored if we don't now already this gun has trolled me I've completely missed the patent once and bounced it once and yes the patent has received a nice buff on the turret armor but I feel like if that shot had been more centered it would have gone through instead of hitting the side of its turret and bouncing off now we've already lost five vehicles and those five vehicles have been in the north and that is a big shift in power they still have all nine of their heavy tanks and we are down to five now when a shift happens like that it can just be like a tidal wave and how many of you have been in this situation where you're like I'm gonna lose <laughs> what can I possibly do to win this match there's an E5 that's pushing very aggressively down the city, and I need to get out of harm's way because I really don't want to get hit by him. I kind of make a little error there, and I don't get out of harm's way quick enough. But now that he fires at me, I'm just going to put one right back into him, and I'm going to duck down. Now things are looking pretty grim. They have a lot of heavy tanks that are pushing down this slope, and our guys are just kind of dying left and right. We are completely outnumbered in the north, but... You know, in these situations, it's okay to just fall back and get into a safer position and actually get some damage because they're not going to be paying attention to you and you're going to be able to get some nice easy side shots like this and at least take them out. Alright, so, again, I want to stress this. How many of you guys have been in this situation and what would you guys have done differently? Because this is kind of a, you know, this looks like a pretty bad scenario. They have, like, what, about 10 tanks left? I guess they have, like, 9. And we have five so we're almost down 1v2 ratio and they have all heavy tanks left except for two and we are down to only our medium tanks now this is a bigger map and there is opportunity to take advantage of distance and accuracy all the things that a medium tank does well but they have twice as many vehicles and if they're able to get around us that's not going to make much of a difference and so I am in a situation here where I am kind of exposed. I realize that that Kronwagen is looking right at me. I should have reacted quicker. The second I saw him up there, I should have just ducked down. I end up taking unnecessary damage, but fortunately he rolls very low at 302, and I am able to get out of that situation without taking too much damage. Now, this is where the leopard shines. I'm able to get my distance as quickly as possible because, again, if I'm caught out in the open with those tanks like the E100s, the Tiger E100, the T57 Heavy, any of those, if I'm out in the open with my pants down, 
they're just going to completely destroy me. And so I need to get behind some of these bushes and keep my distance. Now, it's really important to pay attention to the mini-map um, in these situations, especially that white circle, because that's going to tell you the maximum render distance, spotting distance, um, that the enemies have. And so as long as I stay out of that for the most part, or at least keep the enemies that have... Um, that are within that view range behind or keep a bush between me and them I should be okay now this is where my gun starts to troll me I have heat loaded because at this distance I want to make sure that it goes through but <laughs> broadside shot on the E100 and it does not go through so I have no idea where I hit him there I go for a cheek shot right here with my heat shell he turns his turret but doesn't matter I miss him completely anyway and I just want to give a shout out to our um, STB1 Swiss who was down there on his own brawling it out honestly without him down there we definitely would not have won this he was down there like a champ keeping them lit for us and really it helped having him down there okay so at this point I have a great sniping gun we have the STB spotting we have two tanks down on our base the Kronwagen and the E5 are unaccounted for I'm thinking if those guys are halfway decent players they're probably going to try to swing around behind us. The E50 has never even been lit, so we know that he's going to be full life. And there he is. He gets spotted right in the center of the map. And map awareness, guys, this is where I'm completely oblivious. I could have got a shot on him, but I was not paying attention. It took me a little bit longer to catch that. And really making sure that you know where all the vehicles are at all times is going to differentiate between if you're a good player or a bad player. I didn't take too long to catch on to the fact that he was there, but there are players that will tunnel vision and completely not even notice another tank that's just giving him their side when, you know, because something is on the cap or something. So anyway, <laughs> just wanted to point that out because when I watch my own replays, I do catch the mistakes that I make. And, you know, I do recommend you guys go back and like, if you have a game where you're not sure why you lost, go back and analyze it yourself and be like, oh, I totally didn't even see that vehicle. And you guys do have the option if you are a Patreon of mine on my Patreon website. The link is down below. You can have um, the opportunity to have some of your replays reviewed on my channel as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you can check that out and I can critique your gameplay. So the situation is looking a lot better. We have it to a 4v4, and I cannot seem to penetrate anything <laughs> to save my life anymore. Um, the T57 is driving down the hill now, and I'm able to finally put a heat shell into his side and take him out. But I am firing way more heat than I would like to be. Um, again, in these situations where you're not sure exactly how it's going to turn out, it's nice to have that extra security blanket of gold, especially when you're shooting against all these heavy vehicles. Realistically, I believe I had it loaded here because I wanted to kill that IS-4 and the odds of me penetrating an IS-4 frontally with APCR is pretty slim. Um, another mistake. I guess I'm getting rusty or something, guys, but that Kronwagen, when he was looking at me, I, I knew he was there. I shouldn't have bothered to look for a silhouette, but I ended up taking another shot by him. It was a stupid choice, and I paid because of it. And also, the IS-4 decides to put one in me, and now I am down to a one-shot. I realize that this is not a good position to be in because I cannot damage a Kronwagen with any kind of ammunition except for maybe HE and hurt him for like 10 damage when he's in a hull down position like that. The Kronwagen did a smart thing by circling around behind us like that and really his presence there is very very intimidating and if I make one wrong move I'm gonna kill myself and so and then the E5 is up there as well so being a medium tank and having a good camel crew even though the camo on this vehicle isn't the greatest is to get distance and to use flanks whether we go and cap and try to draw them back out again for our e50m to get shots as they push down and try to spot me or me myself get behind them and try to distract them so our m48 Patton and our 121 can get a hold of them um, really we need to find opportunities and take advantage of them now this e5 makes a bad life decision and decides to push out into the open and he is going to pay dearly for that one so i'm able to put nice two clean shots and when the leopard one's gun works it works very well and it's very very satisfying to get those quick shots in without worrying too much about aiming but now we have the e5 down to a one shot and i think the e5 thinks that he's completely safe here and you know for the most part he would be right this gun you know at that distance of 400 meters and 0.3 accuracy it's not going to be you know awesome 400 meters times 0.3 meters is going to be what 
two meters, meaning that, you know, I don't know how big the cupola on the E5 is. I'm assuming it's probably about three feet. And so I have like a one in four chance of hitting that thing. And guess what? I did fire four shots at it and I was able to connect the last one. So <laughs> those are some odds right there, right? Or statistics or whatever you want to call it. But now we have the situation down to a 1v3. The tides have turned in our favor, but unfortunately we are all down to one shots. He has good armor and he also has an auto loader. I decide that it might be in our best interest to try to cap the base but then our M48 patent, well, when the M48 patent died, I realized that I had to try to do something different and distract him and I decided to go for the cap. But our E5 is pushing an aggressive and I decide, you know what, if I sit on this cap, he's just gonna come YOLOing down, he's gonna spot me and then I'm gonna die and it's gonna throw the game. And I feel confident enough in this scenario where I'm pretty sure I can take him out if we can draw him out. We still have five minutes left on the game, and if push comes to shove, I can always turn around and go cap, but I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Now, if you're reading what the people are saying, everyone's trying to tell us how to play. It's slightly annoying, but <laughs> it is what it is, right? Everyone has invested so much into this game because we all thought we were going to lose, and the mediums that stayed alive really held together as a team, and it's, it's a good feeling like that. So they're kind of cheering us on, slash telling us what to do, but again, I'm okay with it. They're not really being super rude about it, which a lot of people do. Um, so anyway, the Kronwagen is still there. I'm guaranteeing you that he is reloaded, and he is going to try to take us out. He only has to contact one on each of us, and we will be uh, just completely out of luck. The E50M goes around, puts a great shot into him, and now the Kronwagen pushes around the corner. He is down to a one-shot if I roll high, but realistically, when does that ever happen, right? <laughs> so he comes around the corner, I put a completely average roll into him and leave him at 8 HP. He fires at me and misses once, and then he tries to fire again, and I believe right here, he, yep, he accidentally shoots into the brush or into the side of the hill. Now he had one more left and he used that to take out the E50M and now I know he is on his reload. So now this is the opportunity to push in. I have an HE shell loaded because I wanna just guarantee that no matter where I hit him, it's gonna splash him and kill him to death. So this is the, the moment of glory, if you will. Everyone's telling me like, what's gonna happen, go cap. Whatever, you know guys, this guy has a reload. I'm gonna just auto aim, pop around the corner and easy kill. And we were able to win this game. That was a long replay. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. it. Some areas were a little bit boring, but some were more exciting. I really want to show you guys this replay because this is how I like to play my Leopard. It's not really a light tank. You can't do too much spotting with it, but you can relocate and you can take advantage of that gun. Notice how I was constantly keeping about 440 meters, which is that white circle that you see, the maximum view range that I have between me and my opponent, meaning I would barely be able to spot them back off and then still fire at them without getting lit myself. I made some stupid choices with my HP and I wasn't always able to conserve it the best I could, but when it came down to it, I'm still the last one alive with 330 HP and we won the game. Three kills, 5400 damage with 1100 assist. That's a pretty good, decent game if you ask me. So anyway, I'm happy with those results. Hopefully you guys found this entertaining to watch. Um, if you like this replay, uh, I would really appreciate it if you give it a like down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.